Hello, my name is Terrence Davis, and I'm currently in Interior Design 1 at NYIT, instructed by Professor Robert Allen. Thus far in the year, we've completed a color study and are currently learning about the works of Laszlo Moholy Naj. Laszlo Moholy Naj was born in the southern part of Hungary in the year 1895. Born Laszlo Weiss, he later changed his surname to Naj. Moholy was later added after the town Mohol, which is now in modern day Serbia, where he spent most of his childhood. Moholy Naj fought and was injured in World War I, which is what caused him to notice his interest in the arts. During his recovery, he began painting and even after recovery, continued to work as a letterer and sign painter. These jobs are what brought him into Berlin in 1921. Because he was already a member of Theo van Dasburg's camp, he was able to be appointed to take over the famous artist Iden's role at the Bauhaus. Here is where he began to thrive as an artist until eventually passing in the year 1946 in Chicago. Moholy Naj was labeled a constructivist due to his apparel similar to that of a man in the workforce. He wore overalls and nickel rimmed glasses that gave him a persona of mental clarity of a man who relied more on his own work than other people. He was self-taught, which led to his innovative originality and versatility in his designs. The Photogram a form of photography involving the exposing of light-sensitive paper interested Moholy Naj and is used in some of his most popular works. In his paintings, it is clear to see he had a relation to the artist Theo van Dasburg in his use of abstract shapes that create subtle gestures Composition 18 is a work of his we focus on primarily in our class. This painting is one of his earlier pieces completed in Hungary in the year 1924. It consists of various transparently colored geometric shapes that overlap and intersect one another. By our assignments, the painting was split into quadrants for independent analysis. My quadrant was the lower left corner. In my quadrant, I am focused on the black circular figure, which is overlapped by a yellow, a beige, and two red bands. Our first assignment on this work was to practice our color mixing abilities using gouache paint to create an opaque painting model of composition 18. Using only the primary red, blue, and yellow, I mix different combinations to match the color scene. I then cut out the shapes seen in the painting and painted those with the best match color. Once dried, I placed them to the best of my ability to their proper locations. In my first attempt, I learned much from my mistakes. I had trouble creating similar colors as well as controlling brush marks. Through trial and error, I used a color wheel for assistance to try to improve my color matching abilities and gave second coatings to the colors which I noticed created the most prevalent brush marks. Using these and other techniques, I was able to improve my painting skills. Using only Microsoft PowerPoint, we enhanced our analysis, separating the components again 
by recreating the shapes and colors digitally. In dissecting quadrant C, much is noticed about the order of shapes and colors and the role they play in creating the piece as a whole. From this, a tan shade I found to be the ground color of the entire work and is found in three locations in quadrant C, the left, the right, and the upper center. The near black hue appears to me as the lowest layer because its shape is unaffected by the shapes that intersect it. Making up the center structure is a red tone band that lies atop the black circle. This appears in seven different shades. In the complex region of quadrant C, the lower right section, a dark red diagonal band continuing from quadrant D overlaps the previous red band and large black circle. This shape appears in four different shades of dark browns. A diagonal yellow parallelogram seen in all quadrants overlaps the red and black shapes creating four different shades of grays and distant reds. Emerging from the lower extents of quadrant C, neutral tones are seen, overlapping both the red bands as well as the black circle, creating three different off-white and subtle blue colors. I found this to be one of the closest pieces to us, as it affects the black in a way it couldn't have if the circle had been atop. Dully noticed is the continuation of a thin off-white, almost blue vertical band continuing from quadrant A. This shape is only affected by the tan ground color and appears in only one shade. Next, we begin a new model, interpreting and recreating the painting again, but in the form of a 3D translucent model. Using acetate paper and the three primary colors, I experimented with the overlapping sheets to create colors seen in composition 18. The model includes the main shapes come from a thin plastic that is raised and angled to, to appear when standing directly eight feet away from it as the painting itself. I've begun the background tone, composed of a red piece, trace layer, yellow piece and second trace layer to create something close to the tan scene. As for the next layer, to create the black circle, I used a blue piece, yellow, red, and then another blue, which creates a blue very near to the black scene. This shape I saw as flat. Using only one red piece, the red band is placed heading into the black circle from the upper left. Coming from quadrant D, the darker red band overlaps the black and red shapes, also heading into the black circle. The third diagonal shape overlaps the red band and also is placed heading into the black circle from the upper right hand. Seen here is a cropped image of the final model in comparison to my quadrant of the painting. The last and top layer I found to be the cool pointed band coming from the bottom. This being the only vertical shape I see as it's not slanted and not heading into the black circle, rather hovering over it.